that was one of my many live audiomancy streams uh, that I've been doing for Haunt Manual. And I thought it would be apropos to share that in the beginning because uh, 10 months ago, uh, right when Haunt Manual was beginning, when I had just put out the first chapter on Substack, I was on a podcast called The Last Unrifled Yaw. Uh, it was hosted by uh, someone named Ali Words, who's a big technosis person in the kind of occult Nick community. And uh, that was our first meeting together. We had never met previously. And uh, it came out today. So this was a podcast I had done 10 months ago. And it came out today. And I thought, what a perfect cosmic reach around um, about the hauntological kind of aspects of Haunt Manual. And I thought it would be funny and almost maybe a little bit self-flagellating. But uh, to listen to that podcast, I haven't heard it yet. Um, this is me 10 years ago as a baby haunt. And uh, uh, watch me cringe with it and maybe go over what has changed. You know, I was talking a lot about these big intentions with Hot Manual 10 months ago. And I think currently I am on... Uh, I'm, I'm on I'm I'm on many chapters uh, since then, which is really funny because I think I just put out the first one. So why is it sharing that? Okay, yeah. Oh, can everybody hear me? I haven't checked the chat yet. I'm a little rusty at this. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, but yeah, so here's Haunt Manual. So ten months ago. I had released uh, this little guy, neither either or. Let's see when this was. Yeah, July 31st. I think I had just put it out. Yeah, 10 months ago now um, is when I started this project. And that's, yeah. And we're at one, uh, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I think, yeah, this is the sixth main chapter that I just released uh, a, a week or so ago. So it's crazy. Um, and in the spirit of like the hauntological prisms of what Haunt Manual is, which is really a document about my magical and artistic processes to um, help invoke or evoke, you know, uh, pathways that have been lost to me uh, through the course of my life or rebuilding synapses from creative projects that I had lost. You know, unexpectedly, it's been a very big trauma therapy, but that wasn't necessarily in my intention. At least I don't think. But, uh, you know, what is it being such a live and living document, uh, this multimedia grimoire online where, you know, monthly I would compose a chapter and I'd release it. Um, and I've always, you know, given the caveat that it's, things are changing. It's, it's kind of forming, it's, it's living, it's evolving. So I'm uh, a little bit interested to see uh, what my bright eyed and bushy tailed intentions were 10 months ago when I did this podcast and uh, to compare and contrast it. So yeah, it'd be very interesting. But yeah, if you haven't already, please check out Haunt Manual. You can just go to hauntmanual.com. It'll take you straight to the sub stack. Um, I'm still posting on We the Hollowed and uh, doing Prag Magic, the podcast, a new one I'll have out this week. Um, I just haven't done anything on YouTube since our big Haunt Quinox, which was, you know, at the end of March. And uh, yeah, thought it would be due time. But it it just, it sat with me all day that, you know, I had just released the sixth chapter of this thing. And it's in this chapter, I legitimately say to hell with nostalgiamancy, um, which was my kind of colloquial term for what I was experimenting with. And I've moved past nostalgiamancy. I've gotten more into kind of, you know, the prospects of self and the like sentimentality of self and not needing to be burdened or overrun with 
uh, a, a rose colored memory of things. And uh, through a lot of the audiomancy workings I was doing and uh, the, like what you just saw, uh, which are these hypercharged musical improvised performances um, that have a lot of intention down to like the instruments played and, and all of that um, with a certain intention to each one. And uh, yeah, it's funny that uh, how much someone can change, how much a ghost can malform in 10 months. So we shall see what that sounds like. I'm going to um, check in with the chat here. It's been a while. Hey, Spooky, good to see you. Stevie boy. Uh, maybe I'll play. Today I spent many hours working on uh, Sayroth the Mage in my project. We have a musical with a K music project called Dream Boys of the New Apocalypse. And uh, I was mixing a song uh, for quite a while today. So that should be coming out uh, very soon. Uh, I guess that's a good lead way to also mention that, hey, We the Hollowed and the Green Mushroom Project, who is kind of head up by Lux Estrada of the Lux Occult podcast, and, and We the Hollowed are kind of conjoining forces. And uh, we're going to be putting out a mixtape, a big digital mixtape. And you can submit um i'll bring up the uh yeah let's do this well, I'm, i am rusty but yeah i'll bring up the uh, prompts for that but uh, you have until may 23rd to submit some audiomancy or some ritualized music uh to be included on this thing and uh you should because it's fun and you like it and we all like it and so yeah um spoken like a true fiver uh, payer, Mr. Stephen Fiverr Cambion. Nope. Uh, one of the, uh, prompts for, you know, this, uh, digital mixtape is that you have to do it yourself. So sorry, Stephen. I hate to be the buster of, uh, your freshly clean balls, but what are you going to do? Anyways, uh, yeah. How is everybody? It's been a while. Uh, who else is here? Jill. Yay. Uh, good stream tonight, Jill. Thank you for that. Jeremy, good to see you. Alchemical Arts, hello. Hey, Pinzer, my flock. Thank you all for coming. I really wasn't expecting uh, anybody to show up. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of flack for, uh, you know, my uh, anarchic times of uh, of the month where I stream. <laughs> because there's not really any rhyme or reason. But yeah, here is, uh, let's see, that's the Hawkwinox. Do, do, do. But yeah, so here is the We the Hollowed and Green Mushroom Project digital mixtape. Let's do this. Um, I'll blow this up here. Cool flyer. So yeah, submissions are uh, coming out are going to be done around May 23rd. I'm also putting out another podcast this uh, this week, and I'll I'll keep promoting it. But yeah, Green Mushroom Project is teaming up with We the Hollowed, uh, the Occult and Art Media Magic Collective, uh, to bring you fuck around and find out two audio offerings of a magic of magical sovereignty from the Green Mushroom Project and We the Hollowed. So yeah, I'll put the uh, link here in the chat. And anyone that dabbles in music and doesn't pay people on Fiverr are welcome to, uh, you know, submit. Just kidding, Stephen. I know you do stuff by yourself sometimes. Um, if you do another mixtape, I will have some stuff in the future. Yeah, we. Uh, this is not unlike the audio sigil we did last year, but that one was more of a kind of uh you know it was a hyper sigil so it was all tethered together it was mastered together it was there was a bunch of sinew and and um you know constructed things from me and my end and i did a video component to it and that was very involved uh this one is meant to be very much in the spirit of a mixtape where it's you know gonna be you know uh kind of a hodgepodge potpourri of cool stuff without too much obsession from me 
about you know tethering it all together so um yeah i'm really excited to see what what comes of it and stevie yeah i'll play our new song um in a bit let me write that down so i don't forget but yeah um so like i was saying things have been good um i've been really on a pretty intense career track um which is funny and i'll just paint a picture of where this uh, where i was when this interview was was made uh so this interview with the last unrifled yaw was 10 months ago and at that time i think i was still teaching wilderness survival i was chomping at the bit to find something that had more headroom financially um you know uh I'm always consistently uh, spread thin and doing a bunch of different projects. So I'm sure that was the same case then. But I do remember the morning of that uh, interview, like the internet not working. And I, you can, I felt it in my breath that I was, wasn't nervous. I just wasn't in the right place. And I think that anybody that um, does any kind of broadcasting knows that those days happen that you know all the best laid plans can go to waste and that's you know that's just what it is so my memory of this interview having not heard it yet is that i was in a weird way uh things around me were kind of crumbling at that time and it was on the precipice of you know me finding haunt manual and doing haunt manual and then uh yeah and in 10 months holy shit how things have changed but uh yeah here i'm gonna go ahead and put that in time out come on behave yourself don't bring that crap into here please i've done so well keeping that stuff away you are totally welcome to hang out. Just don't talk about that shit in my zone, please. That would be awesome. Thank you. Anyways, um, I'm going to remove this. Stop screen. So, yeah, let's check it out. This is from Alley Words. I'm going to stop it every now and again and have some commentary. I don't think I can muster the entire episode because I'm going to visibly cringe hearing my own voice so let's see where keats was 10 months ago that was released today hi yes sure my name oh let me know if you can hear it in the chat hi i'm ali words and this is last unrifled yaw last unrifled yaw is a podcast where we have conversations about video art experimental music avant-garde literature performance art, and the occult. If you or someone you know would like to be on Last Unrifled Yaw, please get in touch. Keats Ross is an interdisciplinary artist and musician writing a multimedia haunt manual about nostalgia mancy. Hey everyone, this is Ali Words, and today we have Keats Ross. Okay, I got to say something there. Just in the beginning, um, it says, here we're going to stop screen. It says that... Uh, you know, uh, Haunt Manual is about nostalgia, Mancy, because I think that's what I initially intended it uh, to be about. And it's funny because the chapter I just released was, is absolutely disavowing, quote unquote, nostalgia, Mancy, which I think was true at the time of its inception, but is very much not true um, anymore. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, Keith? Hi, yes, sure. My name is Keats Ross. I am a writer of you know, journalistic things, uh, long form fiction. I help run the artistic anarchic collective called We the Hallowed. Um, I write music, and perform and work. Oh my God, this is brutal. <laughs> you can tell that I was flustered from the morning. And with all, that's funny, I was talking about internet uh issues and then that happened to me in the stream but uh yeah that's uh that's that's really funny i don't know how much of this i can take actually let me see if i could skip around working with an auto audiomantic praxis geez i'm 
struggling here. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. What are you gonna do? I was definitely struggling. Good. Yeah, there. you do a lot of audiomancy, and we actually had um, Lux Estrada on mm. episode four, right. I think it was, to talk about audiomancy too. Oh, there you go. And uh, ten months later, Lux uh, and I are conjoining to make an audiomantic uh, project with the digital mixtape. So, hey, another cosmic reach around. Yeah, she's great. So. Yeah, I guess my head's just befuddled. You know, I've been working on something as of late called the Haunt Manual, which is this kind of personal journey into the contradiction that uh, spills out from the macro to the micro. Um, and throughout all of my artistic pursuits, throughout all of my magical pursuits, and it's not only kind of opened up a lot of doors in my mind, a lot of cavities um, to spelunk within but it's also scrambled a lot so I'm, I'm constantly thinking about this huge nebulous idea of not only what i do but what the purpose is um and so yeah that's that's the stasis of which you find me right now is as in a sort of befuddled amusement by all of the the myriad of different things that i dip my toes in but at the same time you know trying to find that continuum between them all and it runs through uh, music, as in my audiomancy practices, uh, which I've been doing for a very long time. I actually have an essay, a video essay on it. I'm surprised how erudite I was about how confused I was about the genesis of, of this project. Um, in my head, you know, having not heard this and it being 10 months later, I thought I just sounded like a Beth, you know, just a babbling idiot, but I'm, I'm sure I still do. But all I've got to say is I am very impressed thus far that I was able to actually put words out. Still make sense today. So, you know, one for Team Dakota Slim. You know, it started as a live in-person kind of art collective where we had a residency in Portland. So I'm talking about the genesis of We the Hollowed right now. So if um, some of you are still confused as to what We the Hollowed is, then I think I'm about to give it a good rundown. And it was live salons every month where we did a variety show. So, and that's when I started Prag Magic was I was interviewing kind of magically minded artists uh, in front of an audience. And then I just started going full throttle with it as a podcast. But now this new chapter is kind of finding the tethers that twine in between all of these from We the Hallowed to Dakota Slim to me as a writer or a magician, quote unquote, and uh, finding all the things that bind that sinew in between. So that's that's where I'm at these days. And folks, I'm still there. I'm still at that point. I think it's uh, I'm starting to understand it's, you know, it's the great work is trying to find that that sinew to tether all of the you know passions that I have and all of the creative interests and you know and just being a good human on top of it all um is is definitely a life's work so you know 10 months later yes there's been progress on that front uh no it hasn't you know been completely turned around and I don't really expect it to. So if anything, that was a big epiphany in the last 10 months is that, you know, I'm, I'm a perennial student and I'm stuck. Um, you know, I'm stuck wanting to learn and, uh, yeah. And that's okay. Like, I just don't think I'll ever master anything and I'm, I'm good with that. But anyways, Interesting. There are a bunch of questions that come up from that. I think the one that is perhaps most interesting is you you say that there's some sort of conflict about being a modern artist shining a light on outsiderdom. And I, I want to add a twist to that question. When you say modern artists, do you actually mean like modernism versus postmodernism versus whatever's happening now? Or do you mean just like contemporary? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I mean it specifically personally, but as I've said, the micro and the macro too. Um, it does come through in a lot of not only how I am kind of giving 
thanks or a, a sort of resolve to the things that influence me, but creating not something new, but something filtered through my own paradigm, right? And sometimes that is thought of as postmodernist, um, but I never really look at it in terms of those generalities or those like artistic movements, even though, you know, I've been supremely and pun intended uh, uh, influenced by suprematism and Kazimir Malevich, an early 20th century revolutionary Russian painter who, you know, wrote a manifesto about suprematism and this idea of giving the artist back the subjectivity and foregoing kind of an academic generalization, right, of art or, you know, of that kind of, I don't want to say elitist, but in, in that class of understanding of what art is and generalities, as opposed to just a subjective entanglement one has as the artist and one has as a viewer. So, Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I think I was, speaking of entanglements, uh, during that time, I really was um, motivated and kind of inspired. And the uh, first... Is that going to do it? No. In the first uh, chapter of of Haunt Manual, um, it really is kind of a treatise uh, that mentions a lot of artists and creatives that I've loved since I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I mentioned Malevich a lot. And I think it started as, you know, I, I was in this drought for so long, um, especially with Pragmagic and, and, uh, and you know the interview format and occult podcasting um because i've always been more of a doer like i just don't it, it doesn't excite me to you know learn the basics of everything all the time I, I just i'd rather kind of get my hands dirty and you know blow something up on accident than you know try to really uh grasp what my absolutist idea is of something because I am very much not an absolutist. And um, yeah, so I can see that I always get wrapped up in these traps too. And this isn't, uh, you know, any commentary on Ali's interviewing style or whatever. Um, but when people ask me, it's it's these sorts of things. It's not unlike when people ask you to describe your music, right? Or they uh, ask you to describe, you know, um, what kind of painting style you paint in. And it's the same with, I think, my anarchic way of, of magic or art or any of that is just that, you know, I can pontificate and we can throw around a lot of big words and, you know, nog some big heads about, especially in the pantheon of great uh, art before us or whatever. But at the end of the day, it really is just kind of this funnel from, you know, your human experience into kind of the fucking somatic world right so it's uh yeah i i run around in circles with those questions but it is fun to talk about and uh and to you know kind of shoot the shit about wax poetic if you will so yeah it's it's i guess it's both okay yeah that makes sense ah it is both i've, I've been reading a little bit of uh this book recently called the radicant by uh, I'm going to say his name wrong because it's French, but it looks like Bro. <laughs> I was definitely wrong. Briard, <laughs> perhaps. But he, uh, it kind of reminds me of the basic premise, at least how you pitched it right here, of the Haunt Manual, because uh, the Radicant, he juxtaposes with the Radical. So the Radical is, uh, in the way he's using the terms, someone who is defining themselves by the soil that they grow in in order to reach forward as an avant-garde towards new horizons, whereas the radicant takes as its manner of organization um, vines. Like, I think he uses ivy specifically as a radicant in that it advances in all directions and adheres itself to every surface that it comes across without being defined uh, from a singular soil that it's growing from. It's like wrapping around and piecing together every surface that it encounters. See, I absolutely adore that. Uh, there's so many things to pick apart in just that, especially me personally, as I work, my kind of day job is uh, outdoor education and survival skills. So it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. So 
yeah, that paints the perfect picture of where I was at then. Um, yeah, because this would be the summer. That would be my last summer doing this. Um, kind of a couple months later after this interview was, was made, I found myself jolted into a completely different career track. And not not like a surprising one, one that I had already, you know, kind of performed and done. But um, through Haunt Manual workings, I was able to find this career track and I was able to make kind of definite decisions about things like the, you know, wilderness survival teaching and, you know, these stalemates that I had grown into. So it's funny that I'm listening to myself now. Um really just start to begin this process and uh you know i had no idea what was to come holy shit it has been a crazy last 10 months it is very much ripped out of this um kind of you know hard-boiled heavy heavy intellectualism of the creative stuff i do you know to contrast that outside of and using the you know, the idea of the vines and, and the soil has come up a lot for me and trying to explain, you know, that sort of contradiction. So that's quite beautiful. I'm definitely going to look into that. Yeah, when I heard vines, I mean, uh, some of my friends, you know, they joke about having a drinking game that anytime I say tether, take a drink, you know, or use some sort of synonym for tether, like sinew, um, you know, vines. Like any anything to kind of, you know, uh, dispel this idea that we're just kind of these uh, solo polar magnetic kind of islands. Right. And uh, we are inherently kind of always touching something. And uh, that's been a big part of the inner and outer. Right. The macro and the micro, especially with, you know, art or magic and even myself and through haunt manual, you know, finding that tether to the past and working within forgotten kind of dreamscapes of who I once was, you know, all the way to the present of, you know, the kind of echo remembering of these things and using them in positive ways. So yeah, of course he, he hit the nail on the head with all the, uh, all that vine talk. Yeah. There'll be a link in the description for everyone. So is there, in this haunt manual, what kinds of, it sounds like it, you're trying to elaborate the ways in which, at least you personally, uh, your practice is interdisciplinary. Is that an accurate description? Yeah, sure. I think it's more, <laughs> I love, yeah, because it's again with the like kind of the academic titles, interdisciplinary. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, it, it is. It, it's a hodgepodge, right? It's a freaking uh, brick a brac kind of style of magic and art. But you can tell how reticent I am to like not send my mind reeling in a well, what does interdisciplinary really mean? Like, what's the actual academic literal definition of what you're meaning, as opposed to me just kind of loosely using that as some like colloquial way of saying, you know, hodgepodge or bric-a-brac. Um, and these are the spinning webs that I get tangled up in all the time when it comes to interpersonal dialogue and conversations. So it's pretty funny. I'm right now. Yeah, interdisciplinary is fine. I do believe in the reverence <laughs> given to the sorts of things that are pick and pulled, but I'm I'm definitely going off of more of a like just a mutated imaginarium kind of based thing. There's a lot of like I said tethers to those interdisciplines, but everyone take a drink. I said tethers. At the same time, I'm 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 kind of finding and resourcing going back to the roots of, you know, before I was so knowledgeable of um, all of these high ideas of creation and magical praxis. And, you know, my working with kids has brought up this idea of just, you know, kind of uh, calling back the world of which, you know, I, I was birthed in and how I saw the world. Um, before the over-intellectualizing of these things. Of course, you're not going to 
supersede that because unfortunately somebody with my brain disfluencies is always going to be um overthinking uh, yeah. everything so it's it really is a praxis to kind of know that but at the same time allowing a mutation of sorts and really communing with the contradiction of both of needing to be something very personal and organic organic but also you know it being kind of spawned from perhaps um you know archetypal ideas but really just personal um interactions with the world and you know through this brain filter that i have and i do see a lot so this is just a keats world word salad of saying uh you know it's i i i'm not disciplined in any current that is um s largely studied uh, i tend to just kind of take and pull from my imagination or from inspirations from all sorts and do stuff with that stuff obviously i'm on the podcast so i'm trying not to sound as like flippant as i just was just now about that <laughs> i'm uh just filling time with words trying to say the same exact thing i just did um but i see where i'm going there because you know it's interesting this last haunt manual article that i wrote we'll come back to this but uh in uh, Salvo, Salvo Siempre Salvo, which means saved, always saved, uh, it's my 20-year nostalgia loop uh, essay and chapter. And it's, uh, I know a lot of you are familiar with um, C.W. Chanter. Well, he's a big portion of this chapter and, uh, you know, got quotes from him and, and all of that. But... Uh, it's interesting for me. So this is actually a, a doctored photo from Eric Millar. That is me 20 years ago under that. Um, and yeah, it's just, I'm finding all of these convergences, right? Um, what's been exciting for me is seeing other eclectic kind of anarchic practices that people are utilizing like CW Chanter with the 20 year nostalgia loop or, Bobby Hale and Leah Ferris and Groucho and Stevie with, you know, um, listening post alpha. And I was at this time, 10 months later from this interview where all of that started to converge and the sinews, right. Became very apparent. And this last chapter of haunt manual, uh, discusses all that. And then it was just a, you know, a kind of a trauma trip about, 20 years ago and me realizing that holy shit 20 years ago that was the last year of any semblance of family life that i ever had like since um yeah that was like junior year of high school it was right before i moved out and uh yeah moved out and had to finish you know working had to quote unquote grow up fast but didn't really grow up at all um kind of you know got buried down by the weight of uh kind of a artistic you know prowess but uh with mental disfluencies that went on medicated and on uh sought after and me not learning things uh when most people learn these things you know, to kind of survive out in the wild. And so I really was just like a, a naked baby in a city, just running about. Uh, don't picture that. But um, yeah, so it's interesting to me that I'm bringing kind of that, that aspect to it. It almost says to me that there was a part of me that always knew that I was going to reach this point within Han Manuel. So very interesting. Anyways, let me check with the chat here. Sorry. This is uh, actually very therapeutic. I can say that the like meta contextual kind of what I call the cosmic reach around of um, doing this really involved project that goes through, you know, writing and and uh, original music and performance and and ritual and magic and all of this stuff that uh, Haunt Manual is. It's really neat that I get to hear 
there was a hauntological time capsule of this interview right when I started it to now to where we've gotten, you know, which is like two records, uh, three, no, four um, over hour long improvised audiomantic rituals, you know, six chapters of haunt manual, you know, the haunt quinox and all of the, uh, you know, bits and bops out there. Um, yeah, it's just crazy what can transpire in 10 months uh, when you really think about it. And it's actually pretty motivational to look back at. But anyways, hey, Renee, Miss Jonicide, how are you? Good to see you. The spirit descends. I'm guessing that's Sayroth. That looks like. Yeah, I think I just modded you because I just noticed the, uh, whatchamacallit, the sigil. Um, awesome. On the rise. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. Uh, yeah, me too. Well, you know, this haunt manual isn't a manual for someone to like sit down and do it as I've done it, but basically to kind of maybe help inspire different parts of yourself to create your own, you know, because before this, um, I wasn't, I was too nervous to do improvised live music streams. I mean, I just was, I couldn't conceptualize it. You know, I've, I come from a background of writing songs and albums and all of that. And since doing this, you know, and hitting live on StreamYard or whatever, and, you know, having my setup and my ritual for live music and just letting go and doing it, you know, I never thought that I'd be doing, you know, live music streams, uh, multi-instrumental improvisational stuff, you know, in a long time. So, yeah, I just never figured that was a thing, but it's been really therapeutic. And as a matter of fact, now I've got a log of all of these motifs and rhythms and uh, movements and things that, you know, kind of build up and cycle. And then you just hit the release valve every. And uh, so when it comes to the next like sit down record, I've got a whole cache of, you know, stuff that was just made manifest from like literally nothing. So, you know, that's been really soothing for me, um, that aspect of it, um, because all of this really, too, is a testament in bettering myself as a human being. Right. Um, getting good with myself, uh, letting go of the what I call the re grunts, which are, you know, when you're walking down the street and you have a passing memory of something you regret and you audibly go, ugh. I do that all the time. I call those regrunts, and I aim to get rid of that. No more regrunts. Uh, but anyways, oh cool. Oh, that's sweet of Kari. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, twenty years ago feels crazy, but twenty-seven years ago it was a crazy mess. Yeah. Yeah, 20 was just on the precipice of becoming a crazy mess for 15 years, <laughs> you know, 12 years or something. I don't think I got a semblance of fine until I was uh, maybe like 31, 32 or something. I don't know. And I'm not that much older than that. So it's been pretty soon that I feel like I've become kind of a socially acceptable human being. But, you know. Never gonna go too much that way, right? But anyways, let's uh let's... again I want to thank Allie Words too, um, host of Last and Rifled Yaw. Um, it really was kind of a gift that they didn't put out this interview, you know, for 10 months. It it's uh in this game, I, I don't want to even call it a game, and I refuse to call it content, but and these artistic expressions of podcasting and broadcasting and all this stuff, there's such a combustible nature to it that people are, you know, continuously putting stuff out. Um, the quicker, the better. And it's, I think it's cool that Ali sat on this and kind of made me have to fess up to it. Right. It's easy if I put something out tomorrow and then, 10 months later, I've got 20 things after it, 
right? But since I basically have to kind of terms with the fact of who I was 10 months ago because of this document um, is really interesting. So let's see. Video file. We don't want that. And yeah, uh, pretty soon here, I'll take a little break and I'll play you uh, me and Stevie's new track from Dream Boys of the New Apocalypse. Let's see. We're going to stop screen. It's been a while since I've done uh, StreamYard. Here we go. And I talk about it in the first chapter. I do see a lot of the archetypal ideas and I do see how it might be redundant in a lot of ways uh, for a lot of people um, that are confined within this sort of contradictory search between a lot of these things. And I'm okay with that. Um, and so I just kind of follow suit back onto this is really just a an expression of everything that came before, you know, in hopes of igniting something new from myself. Hmm. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite because I I could have just said that very last sentence, um, and I think that's hot manual and like a a fever pitch is that, you know, it's um. What see? I even lost it. What I say here? Kind of follow suit back onto this is really just a this is really just a an expression of everything that came before you know in hopes of igniting something new from an expression of everything that came before in hopes of igniting something new there you go that's uh i think that's what i meant with nostalgia mancy before um i actually started started experimenting and doing you know these rituals i think I'm three major rituals down now from this time that I'm talking and I can tell you and in haunt manual, I've, <laughs> I've been very clear that I wanted to be honest that, you know, there are some undesired results with some of these workings, um, pretty dramatic ones. Uh, they all ended up fine and great. As a matter of fact, they're more like a positive t card in a way, but, uh, yeah, they, I can sense the, you know, baby with a loaded gun in my voice. Uh, little did he know that uh, shit was about to get cray cray from myself. Hmm. Oh, you got to love that, too. Uh, just Allie's. Uh, hmm. <laughs> just let me talk until I deflate and then just give me a. Hmm. So. What's your process like working on this haunt manual? Yeah, so that's another thing. It's um, the haunt manual itself is really trying to tether all of the projects together. So um, not only did it does it spawn from things that kind of inspire me or you know shake me down and and ideas of you know more research or talking about things. You know, I talk about how it's funny that the uh, the philosophical idea of the pharmacon has been coming up in my head recently and it's been this kind of ghostly idea that i've always toiled with since high school when i released my first zine and its name was pharmacon holy shit that's a 20-year loop too because that zine came out uh junior year yep i had a high school zine called pharmacon um and uh yeah it's a philosophical concept it was kind of popularized by jacques derrida um basically like this beautifully contradictory kind of element, you know, something that is both the poison and the antidote. Um, you know, he uses like in pop culture, like a vampire who is both living or he's neither living nor dead. They're undead. Right. So it's that perfect in between that third pinnacle and a triangle um, that neither, either, or right. And, so it's a lot of meditation, kind of what I call nostalgia mancy, um, kind of this like hauntology of I do not call it nostalgia mancy anymore. The self, uh, of, I call it hauntomancy now because I'm not clever. Remember, you know, the inspirational bits and bops that spawned a lot of these trajectories, but at the same time, kind of giving them due reverence of where I am now. And so there's a lot of meditation, uh, a lot of meditative practices, 
but it's also I'm utilizing audiomancy. I'm doing um these live improvisational, you know, just going with one kind of key and playing um, live with no kind of written. Um, Hold on, I want to back up because it sounds like I'm talk about what the genesis was. So I've always been doing audiomantic work, and that means I've always been creating with a metaphysically minded or ritualized kind of uh, creative session utilizing music, right? Um, or utilizing metaphysical ways to help enhance or inspire the creation of music. So I've been doing that forever. Um, when it came to Haunt Manual, this is when I got nitty gritty and started really confining uh, each of the audiomantic workings, uh, you know, down to the actual talismans or the, uh, you know, the instruments used uh, for each of the workings down to, you know, like the smallest things, what I was wearing, like it, it's in this weird role play thing where, you know, it's, it's ceremonial, doing ceremonial garb, doing intentional um, casting with intentional talismanic things. And so it's gotten far more kind of astute, far more, um, how do I put it? Kind of less uh, anarchic in a way. Uh, the practice itself is still anarchic, but each of the workings within this practice has been very intentional and very ritualized, um, depending on the intention or the overarching kind of uh, theme of the working. Um, so this is before I think I really started diving deep into that. And so, yeah, so this is me, I think, describing what audiomancy I've been doing that kind of helped conjure the idea of what Haunt Manual is trajectory whatsoever in front of me. And it also do reverence of where I am now and meditative practices, but it's also, I'm utilizing audiomancy. I'm doing, um, these live improvisational, you know, just going with one kind of key and playing um, live with no kind of written uh, trajectory whatsoever in front of me. And it also is a study of what comes up to me, what are the, you know, prevailing kind of notes or uh, are like musical movements that I see kind of generate and turn and then turn into new things. And I use that as the underlying score for the audio portion mm -hmm. of the Haunt Manual, which is me kind of reading this chapter that I wrote. That in yeah, so I think it was still kind of nebulous uh, to me then. Um, it, it got way more intentional um, as you know the the workings went on. But um, yeah. Um, what I'm what I'm realizing is that Haunt Manual, if it was taken and it's like brass tacks and was, you know, able to be transposed to anybody. Um, for me, music has been my tether of communication since, you know, I could make a sentence that in writing. Um, but for me, there's something about music and the kind of over sensory, um, you know, objectiveness about it and the places that I can get to whilst creating music or, or playing music or drowning myself in music, like has been my avenue through, uh, you know, kind of what I call dimming the zimzum or dimming the contraction of the Ein Sof, right? Uh, kind of dimming the corporeal, um, dimming the somatic, right? To get to the weird and get to the other. Transdimensional wayfare, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that's it's just because it's been that's my easy outlet to that. Every other artistic kind of project you could supplement into Haunt Manual and then just configure it to your metalsmithing passion, your painting passion, your you know what I mean? Um, and that's something I've been realizing is that like there are elements that are kind of true with this that I can transpose to, you know, writing or, uh, you know, film work or 
you know, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm passionate about. Um, but for this first volume of Haunt Manual, it's going to be very audiomantic uh, or audiomancy centric, I should say, because that's always just been kind of my second sight, I think, with uh, with art. And, uh, you know, writing has been my main one, but it's you're you're kind of overthrown with more sensory kind of tactileness and physicality you know performing music and and singing and drumming and playing guitar and manipulating and you know so to me it just uh that's my easy easy go-to it encompasses all of that and so it, it works within a lot of different artistic paradigms ah see like the podcast and we the hallowed where it will be an article format but it also utilizes a lot of the practices too to generate, um, you know, each thing. So it really is a journalistic um, kind of culling of everything that I've done before uh, into a mishmash moving forward, a fluid mishmash, but a mishmash nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too, is that, um, you know, these workings, I, I I I am kind of widespread about my many passions, whether it's like writing or music or podcasting or whatever. And through Haunt Manual, I found that tether, I found that sinew that, you know, I do these big magical intentional audiomancy rituals. And then I have that hour plus of original music never before performed by me, not covering anything completely mine. And then I use that to inspire the chapter writing um, as I format, you know, my, my narrative around what I did and what I was doing. And then I put out the podcast with it as the music, as the score for the podcast and me reading that. So I'm hitting like all of the, you know, the cross sectional kind of uh, passions and, and things all stemming from, you know, these, rituals these hot manual workings so it's it is the sinew i've found a way to kind of tether all of these otherwise kind of disparate you know pieces of multimedia creation together and um you know i'm not saying that it's it, and it hasn't always started with music right sometimes it'll start with a piece of writing there is one i think it's the second working where the I was inspired to work on a long form fiction that I've been writing for many years. And I wrote this scene from that book and used that as the intro to the chapter because it helped kind of me parlay like how to in a narrative structure jot what all of, all of these crazy extrasensory and you know big idea things in a kind of a very multifaceted way but a very kind of you know narrative way so it's not that it always is birthed out of the music um it is though that it inspires all like the workings themselves do inspire all of these things and i think that's that's the biggest point <coughs> excuse me is that you know i found um a practice of my own that helps me fortify and kind of calibrate all of my wants and passions in artistic ways to kind of conform together where I'm able to tend to each one, you know? And uh, it's, a, it's a long time coming if you say if you're just a listener for the podcast, that means podcasts are coming out a lot slower, right? Because now every month I'm doing one of those and the chapter in the book, uh, a whole audiomancy ritual, you know, that sometimes becomes an album. And so everything has lessened as far as like the continual output, but everything has been continual and consistent. It's just been kind of spread across. And that's something I'm trying to work on personally is uh, not feeling that fret of, I need to get something out or I've got to do this and I've got to do that. You know, and it's not so much a fear of relevance. It's more of a fear of um, 
not holding myself accountable with deadlines and things like of that nature. So uh, things are always being done and tended to via haunt manual, but uh, you know, it's going to be spread across all multimedia. So when you say musical movement, what do you mean by that exactly? So I'm imagining you, you pick like a minor or something and then you hop on, I think you mainly play guitar and you, uh, you, you kind of yeah. go for it. And then something that you're calling a musical movement emerges organically. Yeah. So in the first case, I'm playing guitar. I'll, I'll be playing a bunch of other things and actually, um, it, it'll kind of go more intricate as the time goes, but the first installment was, you know, very, uh, tight praxis in that I'm, you know, kind of using the nostalgiamancy through music where, um, I give myself, you know, a key and I'm finding that I'm unlocking rhythms or, uh, movements from songs I've written in the past that I have not played and forever, um, kindly pop up. And so then you mean like physical movements of your arms and hands. Playing? Well, that and also musical movements like, you know, quote unquote riffs, right. Or chord progressions or any of that. And I'm finding that I'm it, like a ghost is popping up of these old songs that I've forgotten will show up and then mutate into something completely new. And it's just kind of, you know, this sinew through this, uh, unstopped 30 minute audio mantic process. That almost sounds a little bit like the way you described uh, some of your um, tape work, your audio yes. tape work. Um, I recently watched, I think it's called Dim the Zimzum, one of your videos yeah. where you talk about. It's kind of like a little bit like you're doing the same thing, but through yourself as opposed to the memories of what's on the radio. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like the micro macro too, it's that, uh, that physical interaction, right. Versus the, say like the, uh, the drum machine, digital beats that are kind of, you know, were, were written in the past, but I'm just live kind of manipulating that are kind of already written there, but I'm also interacting with the music live in the physical space as it's, you know, being reverberated out. And it really is kind of this, you know, hauntological thing of rediscovering or unlocking, um, you know, old forgotten songs that, you know, I have stored away somewhere or like finding these different pathways to, to memory. Um, because memory has unfortunately been a big issue for me um, as of late through my struggles of, you know, in the past of drug addiction and, um, a lot of undiagnosed what I call mental disfluencies or, you know, um, yeah, things that um, were undiagnosed that went undiagnosed for a long time. And then after seeking some help and then, you know, figuring out things uh, sort of within the confines of, and I talked to, I talked to, I talk about that, excuse me, um, in the first chapter of Haunt Manual of this, this want to be free of this sort of pharmacology. Um, but, am not yet able to um, because I just haven't gained the right access or root, routinization or, or ritual even um, to work beyond that. And I think because of that, memory has been a big issue of mine. So it's also this really funny contradiction to use the term, and I'll, I'll probably say contradiction 8 million times in this, so forgive me. But um, the contradiction of you know, wanting to purvey a new chapter, but being kind of stuck in the stasis by not being able to remember what to to fix what came before, if that makes sense. And so I think about that in the audiomantic uh, part of the haunt manual too, where I'm sitting there and it's it's pretty broken down. I'm playing, you know, a, my baritone guitar and I'm I'm you know manipulating a drum machine, but at the same time I'm like unlocking these songs and these things that were never finished or if they were recorded, I'd wish they were recorded differently. Um, and remembering that passion to like it, that our art is fluid and that nothing's ever really finished and remembering that kind of 
how do I put it? I don't want to say bravery. That sounds pompous, but maybe it is a sort of bravery and being like open to kind of uh, disregard the finality of what came before, but allow kind of the mutation to pick up the pieces of where it once was and, you know, find some solace and kind of moving forward with, with those art pieces or those songs. Right. So, yeah, uh, that's funny. I think Renee in the chat uh, was mentioning bravery. Um, that's synchronous that that came up. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I still feel the same way. I think there's like, I, I, yeah, I don't know if bravery is the right word, but I do, I do find solace and I do find, you know, kind of an empowerment and uh, not being arrested to the discography of what came before and, you know, being able to, you know, change um, art pieces that I felt were never finished, but just because they're released or they're published, you know, um, you know, my father always used to say that an artist never finishes, they just give up. And I agree, uh, kind of completely, obviously not absolutely, absolutely, um, not absolutely to that, but, uh, there is a semblance in that, but I also would add, you know, an addendum to that. And it's that, you know, an artist never finishes, they just give up until they feel moved to pick it up again. Right. <laughs> like, I think, uh, there there's a lot of uh hushed tones and quietness that you know our uh, peace needs to breathe in one's life um after creating it and i think it's really it's a cool idea and it's a fun idea and there is a freedom to going so what if it was recorded before so what if it's like it i it's mutated in my mind now and it needs to be this and so you know what i made it i'm going to destroy it i'm going to change it you know, and um, that could be said about memory. That could be said about uh, trauma and experience. Um, you know, it's never a point to change it, but it's always a point to kind of evolve with it and to commune with it and to see about, you know, being on a lateral plane with it instead of, you know, in this really off axis kind of disproportionate dystopia, right? Uh, with memory and with trauma so yeah i think uh, the micro being you know a piece of art that was created long ago that never felt like it really had its due or you know is different than you intended it to be um and having the freedom you know and maybe the empowerment later to be like you know it's not that i I want to change that memory. That'll still be there. That piece of art will still be out there, but I'm going to take from that and recontextualize and meta contextualize it to kind of sing with me in the present or, you know, who knows, sing with me in the, in the future. So, yeah. Are you familiar yeah. with Aiden Wachter? Oh yeah. Yeah, I am. Do you know, so, the, yeah, I do remember this piece about Aiden Wachter, which, you know, I, I, I have heard of um, pretty popular around, um, amongst occult circles. Uh, he's an occultist. I have never read one of his books, and this won't be the first time that I've heard someone kind of comparing something of Haunt Manual to some other kind of uh, occultist or artist or whatever and that's totally fine i mean that's you know those tethers are gonna be sprung it's not like it's wholly original but you know means to kind of keep it until i decide that this volume is finished to keep it kind of funneling with a trajectory that i'm intending um i kind of intend not to look into things that I, i'm being compared to or, you know, I do remember this specifically because Aiden Walker is somebody I always wanted to read, just didn't really get around to. And here I am 10 months later and it's still on my mind, but I haven't because I just it's not a fear of it influencing. It's almost a fear of like it dissuading me that I just need to see this through. And if, you know, I pick up something that I see that could be so similar and, you know, uh, what do they call that parallel thinking? 
or whatever, you know, I think it would dissuade me from finishing or it would infect kind of the trajectory I'm on. So Aiden Walker is somebody I will get around to uh, enjoying, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I just, I haven't picked it up. Uh, haven't picked him up because I just, uh, yeah, I want to um, funnel what's already here, so to speak. You know, I am in taking other stuff, but that's more kind of, who knows, who's to say? It, you know, Aiden Walker could be inspirational and take me another route. But I think I'm just so concentrated right now and focused on this, you know, these workings and how they've progressed and what comes next that I've been in a standstill with really diving into other currents of magic or other, you know, philosophizing of magic. Um, aside from, you know, listening post alpha or other people that, you know, kind of tether into what I'm doing and, it, you know, it's tit for tat. Yeah, I may sound like a dick right now because it's like, no, I don't want to read it, Walker, because you're comparing what I'm doing to him. And but, you know, just to be honest, it's like, I think that's really cool, but I need to finish my thing and then I will kind of be able to look at it, you know, with a more discerning eye. Um, yeah. But anyways, that's my TED talk. So uh, I'm going to get the name wrong because I don't like actively practice his stuff, but he has a number of rituals that involve working with like your past memories do you know about those mm, i don't you know i i've heard aiden on friends podcasts and stuff but i've primarily just been so insular with yeah. my own stuff but i should <laughs> definitely look. things have not changed in 10 months still insular and yet not insular uh thus the contradiction right um but yeah that's funny look these up yeah, I, I think it might be. I'm not sure if it's in Weaving Fate, which was uh, his book that's about hyper sigils, or I think the Fever Stone. Might okay, I mean, yeah, and you know, Aiden's talking about hyper sigils. I'm talking about hauntology. You know, we're always going to be citing the quickest words to express these big ideas in the most, you know, erudite way. And, uh, you know, I may bastardize hauntology right i i admittedly do uh in the most recent chapter of haunt manual i even talk about how you know the kind of ironic meta textual kind of elements of hauntology and how that's you know biting me in the ass but it's also giving me some grace about having humor about all of this and all of these workings so yeah it's all like i said it's this filter in this funnel right but i'm gonna skip ahead here and see if there's another subject nothing against aiden i look forward to reading the communion work. of finding you know that tether in between well take a drink i said tether details of how this hauntology that you're practicing works are you like ident you made it sound at one point like you were identifying perhaps a, a list of archetypes that maybe you're calling tethers uh, i might be misinterpreting here mm -hmm. yeah so i i mean yeah the tethers i meant uh, is what we call kind of the um tenets of we the hallowed which are very very simple tenets it's you know we're just all metaphysically minded it's weird that i went to i think this was me having my podcast podcast guest hat on thinking that i need to like slyly mention we the hollowed every fucking four questions or something but it's weird that i would use we the hollowed's use of tether to uh define my overall use of tether because that's just such a iota of it but yeah I'm, we've been through this before i it it is somewhat archetypal um in the spaces in between right so let's see moving ahead moving ahead yeah forgive my freaking internet am i out let it go is it finally done um there we go yeah 
and there there are personifications of the tethers and you know <laughs> for general understanding i skipped ahead like 10 minutes and i'm talking about tethers again it's good to know these things uh it's taken me a long time when I was a kid to try to hush my southern accent. It's taken me forever as a broadcaster to hush my vocal disfluencies. Uh, and I still um, and I still say like a little more than I'd like. And I still say, you know, uh, all the time. Uh, and tethers is going to be added to that list. Stop fucking saying that word get a thesaurus keats sometimes i'll just use kind of the archetypical ideas of you know the tarot um to kind of illustrate such practices uh but i also have kind of my own created um creatures as i'll put them mm. that kind of uh, are, are not unlike comic book uh monsters or ideas of monsters that you know you must commune with uh you know to kind of get the beauty of the whole but i'll go into all of that in the next chapter which will, should be coming out next month um i'm not sure when this episode is coming out but uh uh the first haunt manual chapter and episode will be out tomorrow night which is sunday uh, i think the first or oh, 31st of july so no problem wow that's really interesting i didn't realize that i recorded this on the eve before the first haunt manual chapter and that was back when i was trying to release the chapter and the audio chapter at the same time and if you've heard the audio chapters it's it's a lot of work it's you know scoring the audiomancy underneath and it's 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 a book right it's like a it's like an artistic uh radio book um a lot of editing involved and that's why i'm two chapters ahead uh, written than I am of the audio chapters. I'm, I'm too behind when it comes to the audio chapters. And I, I will still be behind this week because I'm going to put out another podcast <laughs> instead of the next audio chapter. Because really, I will eventually do it for every one of them. But I thought, you know, adding that on top of it monthly, like I got to know my limitations as far as time and responsibilities outside of this here dimming room uh unfortunately you know the tethers are strong <laughs> sorry i said it probably yeah. be like 10 months or something crazy for this okay well cool this will be he called it he said or they said excuse me uh they said 10 months and it's pretty much almost right on the dot so good job ali talk about foresight a very hauntological chapter then oh, about where I was monsters or okay. ideas. Of so I'm about to leap into the future uh, after realizing that what we're talking about won't even be made public for 10 months. And this is why we are here today because here we are 10 months later and it's come out today and it is a hauntological artifact about my hauntomancy workings my hauntological magics within haunt man haunt manual and this cosmic ouroboros right so this is my past self you know divining right now of monsters that you know you must be sunday uh, i think the first or oh, 31st of july so it'll probably yeah. be like 10 months or something crazy for this <laughs> okay well cool this will be a very hauntological chapter then about where I was um, and explaining the genesis of this and how far I'll probably be through it by that time. So that's super interesting. <laughs> that is super yeah, interesting. That is uh, kind of micro macro. Mm -hmm. There you go. Here we are All again. Do right. uh, you have some inspiration? I think that's a good place to end it. Um, at least for this portion, I think that was beautiful. So let's listen a little more. Let's see. I Two don't remember like to share. Yeah, I mean, I can only buoy up the the uh, people that are around me. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm about to plug uh, people like Eric Millar, Sarah the Mage, Luxa Strata, 
you know, Derek Hunter, Sam Shadow, all these wonderful people uh, in my life that has definitely helped usher this sinew. Now I'm going to overuse sinew. Um, but I did want to say, you know, again, um, Pragmagic on Patreon is the place to be for just a dollar a month. You get most of it. I'm, I'm actually very generous with uh, I. It's very rare that I hold, you know, a higher uh, subscription, you know, over or delegate. Um, that's only due to like, you know, really big video projects or big albums and stuff. But as a dollar a month supporter, you can get full albums. You can get uh, there's over 145 posts, everything from, you know, fiction drafts of a book that I'm working on. Uh, never before heard or released interviews, Patreon only streams, which I tend to do more often than public ones, uh, at least a couple a month. Um, the last one actually was great. It was me and Sam Shadow uh, deciphering my last Hauntomancy working, utilizing the Listening Post Alpha kind of rubric. And Listening Post Alpha is from Temple of Babylon, Karanzan's uh, Bobby Hale and Leah Ferris, or Leah Ferris. And uh, they use the English Kabbalah or the gematria to help decipher you know their workings and tie it through twin peaks it's all very very cool very zeitgeisty i really feel like it's kind of cutting edge when it comes to pop culture and magic uh very cool but yeah so there's all this oh yeah and uh if you weren't aware oh i gotta always stop sharing for a new screen here but uh i was on the most recent scavenge rituals, uh, which is a zine created by the scavenger. And I have a piece about that really breaks down my haunt manual workings. It's basically an introductory essay about the haunt manual and their workings because the yet to be released, but already finished and already privy to Patreon supporters is the prospector working I just did that utilizes the spirit box in conjunction with audiomancy. And I edited it down to like a seven minute excerpt and it was released on a five inch along with scavenge rituals, which is uh, it's really neat. Let's see, I think there's a picture of it somewhere. There it is on clear. So yeah, that was really cool. And that came out uh, last month. I'm excited to, that's the next chapter of Haunt Manual. Actually, the next chapter of Haunt Manual talks more about Listening Post Alpha and my work with them. Uh, as this last chapter I just put out, you know, I talked about the 20 year nostalgia loop with CW Chanter, me moving away from the idea of quote unquote nostalgia mancy. And then it starts talking about the future and the prospect of self and cool things that I'm doing that aren't hinging on nostalgia or uh, trauma or like finally kind of breaking free into experimentation of like untreaded places and things. And, and uh, it's been really, really rewarding. So please check that out again, patreon.com slash prag magic with the K. Uh, you'll be able to see all of the hidden gems. And yeah, I really just funnel everything through there uh, because I'm at a point where I'm so spread thin with all the projects and work and everything. I'm actually attempting to be uh, somewhat financially minded and trying to get above water when it comes to all of the maintenance and cost that goes into all of these projects. So yeah, for a dollar a month, you get a, a hell of a lot, especially new albums. And uh, new albums like, uh, I just put this one out on February 23rd. This is from a Audiomancy Dim session. This is from a Haunt Manual session. Uh, the second one called The Aspect are Working. On my birthday on February 23rd, I woke up 
with a a need to just create and release something and i had no plan and so i decided to cut up an audiomancy uh working and turn it into an album and i released it as a dakota slim album and uh yeah it's a specter of 223 and then actually the other uh working from haunt manual has become the ectogasm record so like i said it's feeding into you know a narrative work it's feeding into albums it's feeding into uh original music and original you know compositions and art and all of this stuff it's funneled through here and so yeah this was the big one that uh got me out of my shell and i started making music like i would when i was like 14 with like circuit bent keyboards and broken drum machines and and weird stuff very weird stuff so it's uh audiomancy from an unrealized film because it sounds like a film score as all of these audiomancy workings do and uh yeah this one's called ectogasm you can find that at ectogasm.bandcamp.com so I've been working on this is another project, um, long time coming. Stevie and I uh, did a track. I had, a, I had an instrumental track from my Dakota Slim album, Bardos, and I put uh, some poetry of Stevie, a recording of him, on top of it. And we used that for a Honquinox uh, two years ago. And Honquinox is our big uh, We the Hollywood festival, like stream festival. And it sounded so good and like i was so excited by it and uh, that we decided like we got to keep this going and i think it was i don't remember yeah i think it was for the same one oh no that was for the audio sigil and then stevie did you know two more vocals on some tracks that i had made that i wasn't sure what to do with and we decided yeah we've got to put this together as a release and so stevie does the lyrics and his booming gorgeous scottish voice uh handles the vocals you know and i just do the music and um it's been really fun and so today i've been working on uh, a mix of one of the new songs i'll let everyone get their uh headphones together Get your headphones together. This song is called New Lands, and it is by yours truly and Sayroth the Mage, um, tentatively titled The Dream Boys of the New Apocalypse. <laughs> smoldering cities another terrible century begins shuddering down through spirals of time warlords and goose-stepping soldiers march in rank and line plague war and rumors of war europe in flames black rats vikings Fever ships and ghost galleons, dark crews of poisoned men, the horror of history, the apocalypse is at hand. Foaming foul mouth flagellants, the holy man, burning coals for eyes. God will not desert us, repent and ye shall never die. The bow strung tight, the flaming arrow of Christ. St. Anthony's fire, blackened limbs, ecstatic visions, they feverishly twitch and dance. The apocalypse is at hand. Far away upon the ragged sea, safe in humble quarters, the children of older gods accompany me. We sail for new lands in the west, the country where the sun is set to rest Fast asleep on the black ship Cutting the water Like an evil Prehistoric shark Did 
Stevie boy. How's it going? Brilliant. I love it. Uh, I think it's better than the first version. And I was still doing Rise as the the other one. Yep, Rise is the third one. And can't, then, can't wait to hear that, man. Yeah, me too. That one's going to prove to be far more easier than this one. Because I really just, you know, that the music that I recorded that you put vocals on for Honquinox, that was like, I didn't mix or really master that much at all. And so today I really dove in and I can get yeah. a little crazy with the cheese whiz. Like <laughs> so, Sounds fantastic. I'd love to talk to you about like art, though, as well, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I love to talk about art. Um, but especially like, yeah, art you'd like to use for... Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, most of the, the kind of better stuff you've seen is when I was doing a lot of painting and drawing back in the day. I always mean to get back to it, but I've got about a million other projects and, um, you know, I've got constant guilt that I'm not you know, uh, listening post alpha, I, I never do the spirit box sessions on time. And, uh, so yeah, I'm kind of lost in music at the moment. Yeah, I get that. Um, yeah, it, it like music's the trigger for me. Like once, when I have that kind of sorted, it bleeds into every other thing, you know? Yeah. It was something I desperately wanted to get back to from my days in the band in the, in the crazy nineties, um, and it just never looked like it was going to happen. And then I, I got that Chaosolator thing and I, I said, wow, I, I can actually make some kind of sound and I don't have to play any instruments. It, it, it pretty much plays itself. Yeah, it's and, fantastic. Yeah, and then I, I bought mean, my, my you're guitars. physically manipulating it. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. you can, you, can uh, you know, like, just press a button and a program drum beat comes in, but I don't use any of that. So right, there, right. there is a degree of uh, skill involved, but it's, mm -hmm. it's just such a delight to use. Yeah. And that with the guitar, that's always fun. Yeah. So I've got, uh, I've expanded my collection of guitars. Now I've got my jazz master. I also got a, a Fender Starcaster, which are cheap Chinese crappy things yeah uh, but my friend justin who actually can play the guitar uh says it's uh very nice he, yeah he often... he, the strats the strat style is like just uh you know it's timeless because it's like the way the bridge and you know like the way it's engineered is like for such easy playability yeah like strats are made just to be smooth you know absolutely and it's got quite a, a growl to it compared to the Jazz Master. So, yeah, I love the Jazz Master though. You know, I almost bought. I've had my eyes on a white one for a long time, and replacing the red tortoise shell with the white pick guards. Ah, uh, yeah. You know? <laughs> that's <laughs> went, that's the next guitar. I actually got the yeah. Mary got me the Fender Mustang because I'm basically oh, going to wow. turn it into a mini Jazz Master. Beautiful. Or the Squire Mustang. Yeah. Squires are, are just, you know, they're fenders. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, gonna paint it, though. Yeah, yeah. It's so like you'd have to, wood. you'd have to airbrush it. Would so, you? yeah, I'm gonna strip it. And then there's actually, um, uh, like I was looking online because I haven't, last time I painted a guitar, it was with acrylics, you know? <laughs> and like, yeah, off. yeah, yeah. Uh, they have like spray paint now that you can mm -hmm. just like do it. And it's like a all in one. It's got like a finish in it or something. So yeah, yeah. I'm trying to decide what color I've got the green burst, you know, ectogasm already. So I think yeah. the next one's just pink, right. Or white. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I saw uh, the thing that made me want to get a guitar in the first place was I saw a Squire 40th anniversary, uh, beautiful kind of, uh, blue uh, cobalt blue uh -huh. and it was in the window in the local music store and it just called to me i tried to get finance for it and they wouldn't trust me with it so i went for a very cheap uh squire jazz master but for someone no, who can only play like six chords it's fine it's also like i love the color that like champagne yeah i think it's called it? uh burgundy mist i love it yeah because yeah. it's odd i like i like odd things oh yeah you know? yes me too you don't see a lot of those nope yeah 
so but yeah you have uh so and then bob you and bobby were working on something too musically right? yeah is yeah that what the spirit descends is no that is actually me and justin who is an old uh he's an old partner in crime of mm -hmm. mine we, we went through our addiction cycle pretty much together for the whole way and now mm -hmm. he's gloriously opiate free awesome uh, he took some ibogaine as well to try and just clear the rest of it out. He thinks he should have taken a bit more. So we've kind of Did reunited. To no, a, uh, no, no, no. Okay. He just he just ordered some online and took some okay. advice from the guy he bought it from, and he, he thinks he maybe should have taken more. Although he did describe some pretty, um, you know, it's not a pleasant, pleasant experience, or it wasn't right, for him yeah. anyway. Yeah, because it's supposed to just like uh, shrink the entire withdrawal into like a day of like mm -hmm. transcendental fucking madness <laughs> yeah. right yeah he did see he saw like energy uh, he looked out the window and he could just see kind of weird energy floating down and stuff but he's a great guy a very very talented guitarist so he comes around every thursday night we drink beer play music and and we are uh, the spirit descends so awesome I'm trying to plug it heavy at the moment because I've only got like 24 subscribers thank you Eileen Ebony yeah, I'm gonna do that before I forget right now. Let's see. Thanks so much. Yeah, so, I because uh, you also uh, started the pop orchestra. One, yeah, too, well, right? well, yeah, that was my kind of intermediate name, just to um, separate it from the Saroth the Mage stuff. Uh, oh, so we, that's what the Spirit Descends yeah, is. Yeah, so okay. they're the same. So yeah. I'm already, I'm already subscribed then. Yeah. Oh, groovy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's so just a name change. But it came about because we were talking about, you know, as a musician and an artist, you'll know that when you're in the zone and uh, especially I think if you're playing with someone else and you both just get sucked up into that third mind and we mm -hmm. thought, well, the spirit, a spirit descends like uh, God on the face of the waters in Genesis or something like that. Yeah, I like that. Dispatched by the clouds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great name. I uh, yeah, can't wait to hear more. Uh, that's awesome that you have such a good routinized, like collaboration too. That's the yeah. one thing I'm missing is that I'm, I'm. It's funny hearing me ten months ago talk about yeah, I'm still trying yeah. to figure out a routine. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> that yeah. was me two years ago too. You know. Yeah, but I mean, man, you're you're so uh, productive and creative, uh, uh, and and you work. Uh, you know, I really struggle with my day job, uh, fitting in all my interests and stuff. And so many times a week, I want to just throw my uh, throw my identity badge down and storm out. Uh, but then I think, no, I cannot. Yeah, it's been really rough. I've kind of learned to be kinder to myself in regards to the like impetus I feel to for deadlines and all of that. And like now, you know, Prag Magic, the podcast will come out once a month instead of three, you know, but, you know, that's I'd rather it be good than rush something out. And yeah, working 60 hour weeks, you know, uh, you work 60 hours a week. Yeah. Running like big events. You know, I'm like a head video operator for a bunch of like events in downtown. Nice. And it's uh that's been going great but at the same time like i come home and i'm just i'm fucking dead i just yeah and so it's been really hard and like honestly when you see me posting on social media or like doing any of this it's because i had a day off like i it's mm -hmm. hard for me to do it on days i can't even it's hard for me to look at the phone or do social media on oh i'm the, days I'm the same here. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, I don't do much uh, social media nowadays. I just uh, stick up any stuff that I'm trying to promote and talk to you and Bobby and the, the, the guys in, in that little group. Yeah, it's such a great group. I am, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm excited that I have, like, two, uh, you know, I'm so used to finishing something and putting it out, and now I'm sitting on a lot of the stuff with the LPA and... Yeah. Uh, you know just this great cachet of things that mm -hmm. you know i get to really like meditate on and work with and yeah you know. it's a i kind of i knew that you and bobby and and leah and sam and i were all uh bound to get on because uh, they really come at things from a, a decidedly new angle although they're extremely um 
you know they do proper magical rituals oh yeah uh but yeah there are bobby is just a powerhouse uh, mm -hmm. he never stops i don't think he sleeps he just no, spews it's... spews gematria 24 yeah. hours a day no it's fantastic i mean a lot of the reason why this past week i had to turn off the phone was because you know i was uh I had this really heavy work week, but I was also like, my mind was dipping into two worlds and it was infecting like my job, my work, because I just wanted to just write and do all these things. And I was like, you know what? I have to turn off my phone and yeah. just push through this. Also, you know, I've got health insurance woes fucking every month and I'm yeah. always having trouble. There's always a week out of the month where I'm just like, beat down you know heavily and mm -hmm. uh you know i it's funny in that interview i was talking about how I'm, I'm yeah i'm still in the process of trying not to rely on medication and shit but mm -hmm. you know everything else has got to kind of fall into place before i ex nay that you know yeah well i was actually on sertraline for a while which is an antidepressant but mm -hmm. I, I think it was uh more I kind of had to prove to my work that I was genuinely uh, all broken up uh, when things went to shit with a certain uh, lady last, round about this time last year, actually. So I stopped taking them, just like I'd forget to take them and then I'd, I'd maybe take one every three days. So I've just completely come off them now. Um, yeah. Did you have a like a week kind of detox period from that? Uh, I, I had weird physical sensations, but I always have weird physical sensations because mm -hmm. I'm on a couple of other medications which aren't so easy to come off. Yeah, that was my issue. Is like you don't know, you know which one is having which yeah. side effect, you know? Yeah, and then when I, you know, really having insurance woes, and they all stopped like right before we went to Denver and COVID hit and shit, and just a month of like holy shit, you know? Mm. Uh, yeah, because there was something like. The Wellbutrin, like, I don't even know if I feel it. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. when yeah. it's not there anymore, I'm like, I don't think I need to take this or yeah. whatever. But uh, there's other ones that, yeah, I, I definitely, I feel an immediate mm -hmm. um, disassociation in a way. And I'm worried that it's yeah. become so ingrained now that, you know. But well, I've been really good, uh, you know, since changing doctors and all this. I've ex- out certain meds you know i'm on mm -hmm. you know a small amount compared to the large amount that i used to be on years ago and yeah. uh, i even got bipolar stricken from my health records oh, good. Which is like, yeah that was a big thing because i like i i just i fit like there, there was other things i fit more and there's some there's things that get cross diagnosed all the time mistaken for that and oh, those yeah. those meds really fucked me up the you know the bipolar yeah. meds and whatnot so yes so. Uh, i come across this in my job all the time of course as a, a mental health worker um, right you know diagnosis stick and then you're judged by that diagnosis and people treat you accordingly yeah and that is to say that after reviewing with multiple physicians and and different head shrinks and stuff like it, i was able to strike it because i had a more appropriate diagnosis that i'm ex you know i've been experimenting with that maybe that's the case because the yeah the bipolar meds were just not and it wasn't i like i wasn't having manic episodes like i wasn't mm -hmm. i didn't have mania you know or not in the sense that, you know, well, I would need those heavy medications for Creativity it. is kind of a, a form of mania, I think. Right, but never have they yeah. been intertwined with, like, delusions of grandeur, you know. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. There, yeah, it's just a whole... It's, I just, I always knew that... Because I, uh, I would get diagnosed that from one doctor, and then I'd see another one. They'd be like, oh, they often misdiagnose that for you know uh spectrum asd and then like it was going back and forth and then finally like through testing in the past year or so and doing all this stuff I was like okay cool so i'm just you know spectrum asd like i it's not that extreme as far as you know the 
polarity concerns, you know? Mm -hmm. And because, like, I really, really felt those bipolar meds. Like, they really yeah. sunk me down. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't have the mania, mania to, like, fight it or neutralize, yeah. you know? Yeah, so, exactly. So you were just uh, um, yeah. zombified. Yeah. Yeah, or just, like, I always felt just disgusting. Or, like, it, I always felt writhing in my skin like it just yeah it was bad sounds yeah. nice yeah <laughs> yeah i was renee say sister's uh sister was told bipolar but now borderline personality oh interesting i guess that could be yeah i'm sure that's confused too mm -hmm. Luck luckily i don't think i ha i mean i wouldn't say luckily they're all pretty annoying to have <laughs> <laughs> you know, every one of these mental disfluencies is no like walk in the park but absolutely you know, not I, bo borderline is one that i'm not too familiar with but i could see in retrospect folks that i would die what i know now of it i would diagnose that if that makes sense but yeah. i'm not a physician i don't diagnose or anything i just have my own experience of going through this wretched system too late in the game, not getting the help I needed until it was far too late and damage was already kind of done. So mm -hmm. what do I know? What do any of us know, Keats? Yeah. But yeah. So I thought you had like a, a large chunk of time off. Uh, I had a week off. Uh, was it last week or was it the week before? Yeah. So I did absolutely very little slept ate um spent some time with my uh, lovely new partner claire well, she's yeah how's new. claire doing ah uh, she's doing very well very well so we met still in Jan january so we're, we're still in the honeymoon period i think mm -hmm. oh yeah so that's bound to come crashing down sooner or later well my to <laughs> my toast to you sir is may that honeymoon last until one of you oh. croaks oh, thank you very much i was out trimming a hedge on sunday in the pouring <laughs> rain to impress her father, who is somewhat daunting. Oh yeah, she's got a stern daddy, huh? Yeah. Oh, that that'll keep you on your toes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've met the parents and all that stuff. Nice. Oh wow. So yeah, it's uh, how how did you two meet? I actually, it was weird. I'd um, mushrooms come into it, of course. Oh yeah, it was that trip <laughs> you were. Yeah, like, yeah. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I went to the temple, shall we say, and did, uh, I think that one was for the winter solstice. And uh, I'd seen I can this. agree with that. I'd seen this uh, girl's pro woman profile, and it, she just, she, she's got very bright red hair and very piercing. They're actually grey eyes, but they, they look green a lot of the time. So just this, uh, and funnily enough, I was reading an old piece of writing when I'm talking about uh, meeting a, a bright red hair, green eyed girl. And I was, mm. Mm. so I'd seen her on the trip and I just uh, sent her a private message on Facebook saying, hi, uh, we'll have a couple of mutual friends. Uh, mm -hmm. You fancy going out for a drink? And she said, well, I wouldn't normally since you're a complete stranger. But since we have mutual friends, yeah, why not? Um, uh, we've been together since. That's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes you've got to take a chance on love. Oh, for sure. I love how, um, you know, just kind of organic that pl mm -hmm. played out too. You know, rather than yeah. the, the dating site thing. I mean, it's still an internet connection, but it, it felt a lot more organic. Yeah, and nothing that. against the dating site thing. I just mean like how it was, you know, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just it seemed like a, the machinations of a good story, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, Mary just got home from a trip and she's she's under the weather. Sinus is oh. good. Yeah. Know? Wish it a, a speedy recovery from me. Will do. Yeah, and I've got to uh, Yeah, I got to get back on the horse tomorrow, but I have a plan <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> I started so tomorrow, uh, probably Thursday is when it's going to come out. But I have the a podcast with a bunch of different stuff. So I've kind of changed Prag Magic, the audio podcast, into this kind of radio hour. 
kind okay. of variety hour thing. So it's cool. less of the just one on one chats. It's got all sorts of stuff. And yeah, like a variety have, show. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to have a large chunk of it be Bobby Hale and my initial conversation, not with the spirit box reading in it, because mm -hmm. I just, you know, as like a purveyor of sound arts, I don't think that would be very entertaining to listen to without seeing it you know <laughs> yeah true we tried one as well and it's it's very difficult because he can't hear the questions and i you know it was like mm -hmm. i'll put my hand up when i'm asking a question and mm -hmm. it, it was chaotic and, and fun yeah yeah i mean it, but yeah we uh i i looked today and was like oh we had a good hour chat and i was like that's perfect because the next big movements uh publicly are very lpa involved and heavy and so i was like that's a great mm -hmm introductory thing yeah but uh yeah i'm excited for all that it's been really inspirational and it's, oh absolutely uh, it's really re-energized me yeah. um magically because uh, i was running out of steam there I, I rarely you know you really don't have to be doing rituals all the time if you have put a few years into it i don't think because right. um you know, every time I do a ritual, I think you mentioned earlier, it has these unexpected consequences, which can mm -hmm. be extremely chaotic and sometimes negative. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've said that a million times. Negative at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, your whole your whole yeah. life kind of drops and then has to rearrange itself in a in a, a higher form. So it's a fun but little I, thing, I, magic. Yeah, I agree with you though. Is um you know the more you do it the more it ingrains into your life you start living a talismanic life it exactly. starts becoming yeah. a part yeah you, you know. so you're you're thinking magically mm -hmm. all the time so you don't yeah. really have to put so much effort into it nowadays yeah you just need the total pomp and circumstance every once in a while at that point yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> absolutely the robes and erotic asphyxiation and all that <laughs> don't give away our secrets gates <laughs> yeah well it's so good to talk to you i hope you have a good day at work i've got to yeah absolutely yep i better get into my shower i just want to say uh blatantly using your stream to advertise my own stuff but i think uh when justin and i are jamming on thursday we're gonna have a little interview with ourselves about music uh, no, cool. uh, Justin isn't that into the occult. I mean, he gets it, but he's not. He's not practicing. So, we'll just be talking about musical influences. Uh, you know what we're trying to do with the band and uh, etc. So, uh, try and tune in for that, folks. Heck yeah, I, I will be there. Okay. Um, and then yeah, let me see. Spirit descends. Uh, if you can put your here, I can do it. I think if you just. Uh, Search the spirit descends, it pops up fairly easily. Go to channel. There we go. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for uh coming and hanging out so late. We are all the pleasure. On polar opposites of the day. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. I've been up pretty much all night. I couldn't sleep very well last night, so I've just been tinkering. Yeah, that happens to me. <laughs> okay, Keats, thank you for uh, uh having me on. Sorry, I uh. Uh, about the technical issues oh it's all good i'm not worried about it i appreciate you being here all right keats brother see you soon man have a good one stevie and peace then... to everyone in chat philip blair renee uh I've, i haven't got my glasses on all you guys you know i love you all the people all the people all the people <laughs> so many people all right bit of brit pop okay cheers keats <laughs> have a lovely evening america yeah have a lovely day scotland <laughs> Thank you.
Still alive, you haven't yet failed.